Hello, I'm Jim Lampley. In the wake of the tragic death of working class boxing icon Arturo Gatti, HBO Sports is representing for your ring memory bank the three fights which went furthest toward defining Gatti as an immortal ring figure. His three violent wars with fellow sophisticated brawler Irish Mickey Ward over a 13 month period in 2002 and 2003. On this program, we bring you the rubber match after Ward had won their first life and death battle by a single point in a Connecticut casino, then Gaddy had turned the tables in a more civilized unanimous decision in Atlantic City. We now move to June 2003, again in Atlantic City, and with Gaddy now established as a clear favorite after his efficient, smart performance in the second fight. By now, the public was becoming aware that through the process of apparently trying to kill each other in the ring, Ward and Gaddy had developed a special friendship outside the ring. That, along with Ward's expressed intention to retire from boxing following the fight, prompted some to wonder if Ward's legendary spirit and commitment would still be there. As the fight would demonstrate, no one need have worried. It was June 7, 2003. Here's how I called it with Emmanuel Stewart and Larry Merchant. This has the feel of the old Madison Square Garden. <laughs> I don't know if it had black and white television. If Arturo Gatti can throw 30 to 35 jabs per round, he'll be boxing in the style that served him so well in the second fight. He must resist his temptation to throw bunches of power punches because when he does so, he leaves himself open for Ward to come back. Ward, as Emmanuel Stewart will point out to you, tends to fight in his turn. He doesn't try to counter Gaddy shot for shot. He waits for Artur to stop punching and then tries to land his own. And already Ward goes to his money punch. That left hook to the body. Well, he's coming out aggressive this hand because the last fight, seemingly he would just cover up, cover up, try to wait till Artur finished up and then try to attack afterwards. But Artur would dip away, move out of his own, and he couldn't catch him. This time, he seems like he's going to come out and try to initiate things a little bit better. We blinked and shook our heads yesterday when Ward contended that he wanted to box with the boxer a little bit. Try to be cute in there. Larry Merchant said, you do one thing for 18 years and now you think you can do another? <laughs> but Ward is living up to his pledge to try to move side to side, start with his jab, and box more than in the second fight. in the second fight. He's got to be more aggressive. He can't try to just wait until everything is perfect. There's a scrape on the brow of, of the Ward. Ward. Yep. In the middle of the brow above the left eye. And now Arturo Gatti fires the right hand right at the point where Ward's brow is scraped. Emmanuel is at a disadvantage offensively to the two, the two fighters that they know each other so well. I think so. I'm going to this fight here. I don't think either one is really really set in what kind of fight that they should fight. But I know one thing. Gaddy is a little more fluid with his natural movement. So Ward is going to have to step it up a little bit more than he is right now. Gaddy with the body shot attempt. Ward yeah, pops good, him with a little good, right good, hand. Good counter punch right back. At least he's punching right back instead of waiting until Gaddy finishes a big flurry. Ward looks very energetic in there, particularly for the first round. And he's just barely missing Gaddy with that short right hand. Ah! The first round, more of a boxing match. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. And some Ward fans it. might have expected. What he's trying to do is throw you off by throwing right hand. He's trying to catch the right hand over the jab, okay? That's all he's trying to do. And in doing that, He's trying to hit you with the right hand leave so he can get the hook downstairs. That's it. Do me a favor. Keep working the jab. Put a little more speed behind it. And start keep throwing those right hands to the body. Fix. Like you got us off. You let him get off every time. You threw the right hand once. It was perfect. You started the same motor again. You're falling around. You're falling around. He's doing the same thing. Watch him. Bang, bang, bang. Jab. Throw the right hand. 
Be quick, be quick, man. Quick, man. That right hand you stopped me with, that will stop him. He heard him just then. You can't throw once. You gotta be more active, man. Come on, be active. It's the last fight of your career, man. Fight hard, baby. Hands up. Ward's trainer is his older half-brother, Dick Eklund, himself a former fighter. He's been Mickey's trainer for the last several years, ever since his release from prison after a stint on drug charges. Part of the subtext of Mickey Ward's career is that he gave his older brother something to live for, something to use as a beacon to help him beat the demons of drugs and alcohol. And then, and then the Eklund is also one of his fan partners because he referred to the fact that he should throw the right hand that he's been hitting me, hit him with in training at Guy yeah, Ward. Yeah, they yeah, yeah, get, get it, get it, get so. it. Crowd begins to chant, Gotti, Gotti, Gotti. If Gotti continues to beat Ward to the punch, Ward will revert to his more natural style. Yes. Left hook upstairs for Ward. Gaddy showing the movement and speed which carried him to victory in the second fight here. against the ropes and Earl Morton comes in to move them apart when Arturo squares his shoulders up whether on the ropes or whether he's moved Ward back into the ropes that's when Mickey has his best chance to land that left hook yes, to the body because at a certain distance Mickey's legs is just a little bit kind of spread kind of wide where it's hard for him to reach he's always short of punches oftentimes until he gets him right into the ropes Atar is much more fluid with his footwork and his punches, so he can get in and out a lot faster. And this is where Ward should try to keep the fight. Good left hook to the body by Gaddy. Third punch in the combination. Arturo very energetic here in round two. Gaddy threw 67 punches in round one. That's just about the right number for him. And, and Ward has had very little head movement. He's just eating up jabs as he's coming in, whereas Gaddy's got a lot more upper body movement. Ward committing a little bit too much, perhaps in frustration. And Gaddy, solid one, two. And ducking and slipping and wrapping Ward up. And a left hook to the body. And Arturo Gatti may have twisted an ankle. Limped away momentarily after taking that left hook to the body. I don't know if that was out of whether he might have claimed that it was a low blow. No, he did. Oh. Yeah, he definitely thought it was a low blow. Yeah, Ward has a bloody nose now, and his face is getting red all over. These two guys box, it's like watching Rottweilers at a dog show. Look for the body. Okay, don't worry about the head yet. We get the head later. Okay? Very good, baby. Very good. Okay, very good. Very good, Arturo. Double up on the jab a little more. But give me some more right hands. Here's the shot that Gaddy complained about. And you see why. Arturo Gatti has thrown 94 jabs in the first two rounds. That's pretty surprising. Mickey Ward has thrown 60. That's very surprising. 30 jabs per round for Ward. And you wonder when he'll dispense with the boxing strategy. Well, if the fight continues to go as it is, Gatti's sliding to a decision, particularly in view of the fact that it's only a 10-round fight. Ward is going to have to start punching more. Ward landed a little counter right hand, but it's mostly Gaddy. Hard right hand to the body by Gaddy. Ward with a little pop up six. And every time that Gaddy throws a punch, Ward should come back right away instead of waiting until he finishes a series of punches. He should come right back immediately. Like that. Yeah. Oh, big 
one two by Arturo but a little extra power behind the right hand Ward hits him with a right hand flush one byproduct of Gaddy's increasingly superior conditioning. The fact that Arturo takes much better care of himself between fights now than was the case earlier in his career. As a result of that, Manny, he doesn't cut as much as he used to. No, he's, he's trying, it, it, I think it's changed his whole life. He looks like a new young fighter, like someone who's about 20 years old. You would not believe that he's been in those great wars that he's been in. He says he's learned a lesson about how his party habits and his nightlife between fights and help to result in cutting and facial damage. And Nick A. Roy doesn't look too good at this point in time in the fight. Arturo's beating him up. No, he's beating him in every way. Power punches, boxing, dream generalship, seems to have more spirit. Stop. Stop. Come on. Nicky Come on, almost spun go. himself into the canvas. through the first three rounds. Remember, Ward can change a fight with his left hook to the body if he gets a chance to land it. But he's got to throw it. It's not unusual for Mickey Ward to lose the early rounds, but he's not getting to Gaddy enough, particularly to the body, to slow him down for the later rounds. And right now he appears further away from being truly in the fight than at any time in the first two yeah, fights. And his, his merely defense is just merely to hold his hands up over his head and anticipate where a punch is coming from. Instead of slipping his head, moving it, and punching more. You might draw the conclusion from these first three rounds that Arturo Gatti has learned everything he needs to know about yes. Mickey Ward. And he's fighting okay, a brilliant fight. Very beautiful. Mike Gibbons back. Okay, listen. Let's go back downstairs again. Let's go back downstairs to the body. Okay, now listen, go for the feints. He's going for the feints to the body. So keep feinting him downstairs, jab, jab, feint him, jab, then drop one downstairs. But like I told you, he's going to counter with that hook if he yeah. could, okay? Now when you slip the hook and he throws the right hand, don't pull out. Just stay low, let it go up, just go up under them. Very good, beautiful. Okay, but you're boxing beautiful, baby. You're boxing beautiful, it's your show. Up there, go up there. Relax. Yeah. Relax. Got it? Yeah, Mac, Mac, Mac. Okay, let's go. If Mickey Ward wants to get back into this fight, he's going to have to return to his shock and awe style of fighting. Yes. Target practice in round three. Gaddy landing 23 out of 34 power shots. That is a withering 68%. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through three? <laughs> you know, Jim, the only question about round three was, should you have scored a 10-8? I scored a 10-9, three to nothing, 30 to 27, Arturo Thunder Gaddy. Jim, I gotta tell you, this ring is huge, and Arturo Gaddy's using every single inch of it. He moves beautifully, gets off double, triple shots, gets the hell out of there before Mickey Ward can counter. Nice job by Earl Moore. This is a terrific referee. Yep, but Arturo Gatti took a shot and is now in trouble and getting pummeled by Mickey Ward. It was the a, body punch, punch, a body punch started this. One punch changed the fight. It was a Mickey Ward left hook to the body. We told you he could do it. And we're wondering if Arturo may have hurt his right hand again. He grimaced in pain yeah. and hasn't thrown the right hand since. Left, 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 left. The way he's working in left hand, he won't have to throw it right in. Left, left, left. Still no right hand. Appears almost certain at this point that Arturo Gatti feels as though he's broken his right hand. And Mickey Ward is taking advantage to pound it. And Arturo Gatti has hurt his right hand. That's going to change the fight. And this is the wrong fight to have anything hurt.
Woods back in it now. Back in it in a big way. Five straight left hooks by Mickey Ward. Using the left hand. Yeah, the right hand is definitely hurt. They may have to end up stopping the fight. This is what makes boxing so different from all other sports. In any other sport, you could call a timeout, substitute another athlete. You can't do it in boxing. The whole team is gathered. Arturo wants to throw his right hand and just can't. Mickey Ward landed a haymaker shot. Gaddy's showing great courage. As he tries to get Ward off of him with one hand. Five straight left hooks. Seven left hooks. He mixed in one right hand. Here comes Ward. Crowd on its feet. This is what they came for. High drama in Atlantic City. You heard Getty say, my hand, my hand. He hit the hip bone, it appeared, yep. of Mickey Ward. Broke it right on the point of Ward's hip. You know, when something like that happens, it possibly could have been an injury already that just was. And you see him wince after he throws that right hand. And don't forget, he was hitting around. Yeah, he was hitting a soft area, too. Well, you heard Buddy McGirt say, what do you want me to do? Implicit in that was, do you want me to stop the fight? Arturo said, I'm going to keep going. And then McGirt gave him specific instructions on how to try to fight Come with on, one man, hand. Don't hit him back yet. Come well, on, man. you can't really dwell on the issue with the fighter if that's the case. You just ignore it the best you can as long as he can box. But Arturo Gatti has a lot of boxing talent. He possibly still could win this fight by just moving and boxing, but not staying in one spot. Okay, walk it out. Let's go. And the injuries were where they hurt his hand in the incident, so it was always with punches on the cup, which is soft, and always into the body, which means the hand could have been hurt before coming into the fight. How about the courage it takes for Arturo to be throwing right hands at this point? Unbelievable. I mean, how do you even let it go? You heard McGirt saying, I want left hooks to the body. Then bring him back upstairs. Gaddy jabbing, pawing with the right hand, trying to make it at least a strategic factor, if not a meaningful one. Emmanuel, do you think that Gaddy, that Ward knows about the right hand yet? I'm very interested. I, it's a good interesting question. I don't know. I really don't know. And even when you have an injury, uh, uh, a hand get broke, in, in the heat of the battle with the blood flowing and everything, you still can throw it sometimes. It gets numb, and really, the next day, uh, after there's a the cut, There's a cut on the left eye now of Ward. Amazingly, that cut produced oh. probably by a right-hand punch from Getty with his broken hand. Arturo beginning to use the right more and more. Yes, he's using the right hand a lot more now. Might be going numb on him. You know what he's doing? He's pulling the out. punch. He's Walk throwing it, it but Pull not it with the out. abandon of the left. No, he's not really turning all of the power through all the way. He's scoring points with it, but he's not letting it go. Incidentally, Ward has Al Gavin, one of the greatest of cut men in his corner. He was cut in the second round of the first fight, and Gavin easily kept him in the fray all the way. Opposite corner should Gaddy cut. Joe Souza is right up there on the same level with Gavin. Low blow warning now for Ward. No point deduction. 
In the, in the, a recent fight we had between Spadafora and Durin, both fighters bled from both eyes, something I had never seen before. Nikki Ward lands a solid straight right. Gaddy with a huge left hook. Ward with a left hook. Near trading power shot. Yep, what happened to the boxing? fight strictly with his left hand and occasional right hand goes in the line because of his great boxing talent and Ward comes in and doesn't punch often enough. Hang it up, Gavin. Come on. Al Gavin got right. the bleeding to stop on the cut above okay. Mickey Walk Ward's left eye and you heard Gavin telling the doctor Dominic Coletta it's not going to be a problem. One reason you have a great cut man like Gavin is so that the doctor will listen to him when he says the fighter can stay in the fight. Three straight body punches with his right hand by Gaddy. Not big punches, but just to remind Ward that even a one-handed puncher sometimes can shoot bullets with an empty gun. You know, he's mm -hmm. very seldom throwing a right hand to the head, which is, would be a harder target. And now Ward momentarily switches to a southpaw stance. We asked Gaddy yesterday, what do you think Mickey could do to surprise you? He said, well, he could come out and fight in a southpaw stance, but I'm ready for that, too. a chance to maul him a little bit. Blood begins to flow from Mickey's left eye again. Gaddy with a brave right hand on the Ward's chin. Not a hard one. hook down there. Gaddy using the strategy that Buddy McGirt articulated. He landed right hand to the head and hurt his right hand again. Down comes Arturo on a wide swinging right hand. I think it was mostly from balance. The bell sounded and round six has come to a close. Mickey Ward who was falling behind on points now has a leg up to get back into the fight. Hands, baby, I'm telling you, he's trying to come up the top with that right hand I throw. Yes. You got to move to your right a little more because you're dropping that left hand. Keep the left hand out in front of you. I throw, how you feeling? You're fine? 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 You're
just as Gaddy was about to take a five rounds to one lead near the bell. That knockdown can even the fight on points. Caught him on the top of the head. Just as he was pulling out. Confidence builder for Ward. Ward can't get the mouthpiece into his mouth. Earl Morton caused time to give Dickie Eklund the chance to come in and retrieve the mouthpiece for Mickey. Mickey punches his brother in the belly <laughs> as he leaves the ring. So far in this series, the fighter who has knocked the other one down has won each fight. They're standing and trading shots at the center of the ring. This is very good for Ward. Harold, how do you have it so far? Dan, this is close again. 57-56, four rounds to two. Arturo Thundergaddy. Jim, I gotta tell you, the extra point in round six just made this fight winnable for Mickey Ward. And God damn it, you gotta give him an extra point because he's a clean knockdown. And he hurt Gaddy with the right hand. Hurt him badly. And here comes Arturo trying to fight his way off the ropes. It's turning out to be Ward's right hand against Gaddy's left hand. There it is again. Well, because Gaddy has to use the left hand as his only offense, Ward gets more and more chances to counter over it with the right. And he's taking advantage. So Arturo has to keep throwing. And now Arturo's First. left eye has opened up and begun to bleed. Both fighters bleeding from the left eye. The Atlantic Ocean outside these doors is turning into the Red Sea. Look at Arturo firing that broken right hand. Ward waits for him to finish and then stages his own assault. Oh Mickey Ward done up, by left, left, left hook. Left hook. Can Gaddy follow up? I never thought I would see anything as exciting as the first fight. <laughs> this is equaling it and maybe more so for power punches. His seventh round. Yeah, especially when you consider the drama that one guy fighting with his hand broke. Reminiscent of the ninth round in the first fight. There has been nothing like this series in boxing since Bowen Holyfield a decade ago. This is better. <laughs> this is better. And no championships involved. And you get more action in the 10 rounds than we normally get in a 15-round fight. Ward almost seems like he's ready to go. seemed to hurt Gaddy badly. But if you've been watching Arturo Gaddy, you know that that just wakes him up. In a round in which he seemed momentarily in danger of being knocked out, Arturo Gaddy landed 61 of 101 power shots, 60%. That's why Buddy McGirt said, beautiful round. Again. 
York trying to get him just one left hook to the body. Almost got it there. Single leg had it really rehearsed a lot for taking away that left hook to the body from more. That's the one punch that he hasn't really been hit too effective with the entire fight. In the meantime, he's getting hit with those little short club and right hands as Ward gets close to him, which he earlier couldn't hit him with because he was too far away, but he's getting close to him now where he's hitting him with those short right hands. You can almost see Arturo clench his teeth and screw up his courage when he has to throw the right hand, but he goes ahead and does it anyway. Emmanuel, what can Ward do knowing that the right hand can't really hurt him anymore from Gaddy? What, what tactically, strategically can he do? Try to get him into exchange where you'd have to have both hands punching where you wouldn't have to, you can't just throw one punch and get away. Make him get in a total total exchange where you have to have both hands going. He would have a big advantage. In the seventh round, with his right hand obviously damaged, Arturo Gatti threw more punches in the round than he's ever thrown at any previous time in his career. Again, I absolutely hate to use the word abhorrent, but this is incredible. It's as if they're not even human. Well, it's because they're human that makes this such a compelling drama. I rub it out. Rub it out. It definitely isn't normal. Even other fighters are moved by the great toughness and resilience of these two fighters. Qualities that are every bit as rare as great boxing ability. I think his right hand's probably just got numb to the point where he doesn't even feel the pain anymore. And probably he damages it every time he lands yes, it. Well, he just landed again and hurt it. This is hurting bad. And the pain is probably going through his entire arm. Come on, come on. Let his head out. Let his head out. Come on, guys. Eight rounds in the books, only six minutes to go. Better round. In the Gatti War Trilogy. Two rounds left, Arturo. Listen to me, keep that jab in his face, okay? You keep that jab in his face, baby, okay? Six more minutes, upper body movement. Okay, listen. Okay, you win that, man. Get it. Okay, when you get inside, let's use these, get out of there. That's what he wants. We're not doing that no more. Okay, we fighting our style now. Okay. Okay? We got six minutes, baby. Nice one. Nice one, baby. Make hand, hands and close. One shot, Mickey Ward looks like he's coming down the home stretch of a long, hard race, both yeah, in this fight and in his career. He's going to have to throw a lot of punches. That is out hustling him. Even with the hurt hand, he's still out hustling him. Yep, Mickey Ward only threw 44 punches in the eighth round, landing 13. Arturo Gatti, 24 out of 62. Arturo, the more confident fighter, even with the damaged right hand, as we come to these last two rounds. Ward's camp was worried the referee Earl Morton might have too much of a tendency to get involved in the fight, but Morton has done a whale of a job staying out of the action and just letting him fight. He's done a great job in that. Ward just a tiny bit short of big damage on that right hand. Every time they get close, Arturo bends to his right side and plants his elbow against his rib cage to be certain that Ward won't get in that left hook. Yeah, they're both becoming protecting the bodies from left hooks. 
And that's been the, the least effective punch tonight, which is interesting. A, a, major, hook, a major basic staple for both fighters. Yeah, the left hook to the head by Gatti has been very effective in hitting Ward, and, and Ward has been more effective by getting close and dropping a short club and right hand over the side of the head on Gatti. Taking advantage of Gatti's constant use of the left. Gatti pushing a right hand into Ward's face. Uppercut lands. He's using every variety of left hand punches he can dream of. In addition to occasional right hand. Ward firing right hand after right hand, trying to take advantage. Gatti with a hard right to the body. From Gaddy. Yeah. Loosening up with the right hand, throwing it more and more, and able to set up a good left hook there with a the right uppercut. He seems to be spiritually and mentally very much in that fight as compared to Nicky. Another easy round for Arturo Gaddy, who used his Let's boxing round. skills to fend off Mickey Ward. Round. Use your legs, but let your hands go. Okay? Box him, but, but use it. Use it. Move your hands. Okay? We gotta close this show big, but no slugfish. Okay. You understand? Give me head down, Mike. Give me head down a second. <laughs> In his 51st fight, Mickey Ward is going into what he says will be the last round Hold of his shot, career. Shot. Last time you feel that. Look at me, baby. Last round, baby, okay? Three minutes. Okay, you want confidence, Arturo. Let's go. But use your legs. Let your hands go. Use your legs. You put it all together. Statistically, Gaddy has dominated the fight, but Ward is the one with a knockdown in his pocket. He knocked Gaddy down in the sixth. This is the 30th round. And it's going to be a good round, too. Of a majestic trilogy. Harold, how do you have it coming yeah. to the 10th? Okay, Jim. Seven rounds to two. 87, 83. Arturo Thundergatti. Jim, I gotta tell you, he hits him and he moves. He's got a lot of room to move in his spin rig. He doubles and triples that left jab. Just keeps moving, stays on his toes. Mickey Ward, the older fighter, can't catch him. Arturo Gatti dominating with his effective aggressiveness and his clean punch. And the, the corner of Gatti told him to just box, but the warrior has taken over, and he's gonna fight this round. It'll be frustrating for Ward if he can't land just one more left hook to the body. One more signature for the long career. But it's a mark of how Arturo Gatti has rebuilt his career and rebuilt himself as a fighter. That after the adversity he faced in this fight, with a damaged right hand and down in the sixth, he has come back to dominate. Come on, walk it out, walk it out. A resourceful performance for Gatti, who may finally be in position to try to fight for a title one more time. Great left hook by Roy right there. Great left hook to the head. To start one last rally. Oh. And a hard right hand by Ward. Mickey Ward's gonna oh. unload the kitchen. Find out everything he's got left. Gaddy is about to go down if he got hit with his bit of ropes and then all of a sudden he came alive again. That may have been the last hurrah of Ward. Yeah. When they announced the fight here on the boardwalk, it sold out faster than would any title fight in the sport. The only title they fight for is the memory 
of their great three fights against each other. This is called getting your money's worth. And they rise again in Boardwalk Hall. share together, only they know. Only they can touch it. Only they can feel it. Another great performance by both fighters. And now let's go to Michael Buffer, who has the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after 30 grueling rounds, a round of applause for two warriors who gave it everything they had in this ring. We now go to the scorecards for the final chapter of the Gotti War Trilogy. Joseph Pasquale scores it 96-93. George Hill, 96-93. Luis Rivera, 97-92. All for the winner by unanimous decision, Arturo Pande. So now, the trilogy was complete, and both fighters could move on toward a life built around something other than fighting each other. Ward made good on his promise to retire. Gaddy went on to fight seven more times, and in the last one, before his retirement in 2007, he was trained by the man who had now become his closest friend in boxing, Mickey Ward. Four times in his career, Arturo Gaddy appeared in the fight judged as the best in the sport for that year. Now he's gone, apparently the victim of a violent murder possibly at the hands of his own wife. It is with great appreciation and respect that HBO Sports has brought you, in three special telecasts, an appropriate eulogy for a unique ring personality, Arturo Gatti. I'm Jim Lampley. Thanks for being with us. This has been a presentation of HBO Sports.